good morning. This is the Way of the Cross broadcast, and I'm Brother Noel Hawks. I hope that you can stay with us for the entire broadcast as we try one more time to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, it is a great joy to be with you again on this Lord's Day. We appreciate you that tune us in, and we desire you prayers today that we'd ever be what the Lord would have us to be. God's been good to us, and uh, most of all, he died for us. We thank him for that, but he's been so good to us to take care of us and sustain us and to minister to us in so many ways. And I'm thankful today that I know the risen Savior. It's good to be saved. And uh, if you're not saved today, you can be. Jesus died for all. He tasted death for every man. And salvation is free. It's a gift. Uh, it cost him something, but it cost you nothing. It cost me nothing. And all we have to do is come before God as a sinner and call upon the name of the Lord, and uh, the Lord will save us. I'm thankful for that, and uh, you know, he's willing to save. And so today, I want you to know Jesus loves you. You say, nobody loves me. Jesus loves you. I love you, but I can't say that I love you as much as the Lord loves you. Uh, he made you. He created you, gave you physical life, and he wants to give you spiritual life. And I hope that you'll call upon him today. Well, it's Mother's Day, and I want to say to all the mothers out there, especially my mother, who's listening this morning, I want to say Happy Mother's Day, and I appreciate all the sacrifices of mother. I always felt secure uh, growing up. I knew Mama, if I got sick, Mama would take care of me. I knew Mama was going to feed me. I always felt good about that. Mama fed me good, and uh, I appreciate uh, a good mother uh, that loves the Lord, and I've been a Sunday school teacher ever since uh, maybe I was a child or maybe, I don't know, somewhere around the time I was just a little uh, a little person, a little child. My mother was a Sunday school teacher. She was my first teacher uh, in the beginner's class, and I appreciate her teaching all these many years and still does that today. But I uh, just want to wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. And uh, we, where would we be without good, godly mothers? And uh, we thank the Lord for you and appreciate uh, everything that you have done, all the sacrifices that you've made. I want to wish my wife a happy Mother's Day as well. Uh, we uh, together, we have uh, had six children we've been trying to raise. Uh, we have one that's already out and married. And uh, it's hard to believe that uh, here in October, Lord willing, I'll be a grandpa. We'll be grandparents. And uh, I don't, I'm not old enough for that, but uh, it's, it's coming. And so uh, I'm looking forward to it and I'm excited about that. But uh, let's pray this morning. And uh, again, thank you all the mothers that listen and uh, just keep being faithful. Keep, uh, keep loving those children, disciplining those children as well. And uh, if you love them, you'll discipline them. And uh, I always knew mama would do that. And so appreciate uh, mothers that steer their children in the right direction. And so happy Mother's Day. Hope you have a wonderful day. And, uh, you know, I'd cook for my wife today, but she wouldn't eat it. And so uh, I'm not a cook, but uh, we do uh, appreciate all the mothers and all the sacrifices that uh, you've made. All right, this morning, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to just mention... At Liberty Baptist Church, where I pastor, we are still a meeting in our parking lot. And I'm so pleased we've had good attendance uh, that uh, people have been coming out. We've had a number of cars uh, that have come out. And some, uh, I still talk to people in our church that uh, didn't know all the details about it. We try to get the word around, but uh, we let some slip. And, and that's partly my fault, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, just talked to some a day or two ago. And uh, just to mention in how we were doing things and just want everybody to know that it's safe to come and meet. And so we're doing that in the parking lot. Lord willing, before long, we'll be able to get back in our church building. But uh, until then, we'll do what we can. And so we're posting things on our Facebook page. And we'd like to encourage you to go to our Facebook page. Liberty Baptist Church, Moxville, North Carolina is the Facebook page. And you'll find videos, you'll find our live stream at Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, and that'll also be on there after the service is ended. But we also put a Wednesday night message on there, a video message. And also this radio broadcast, as I'm recording it, I'm also making a video 
of it for my Facebook, for our Facebook page at the church. And so if you're listening to me this morning, you can go to Liberty Baptist Church, Moxville, North Carolina, and you can watch this broadcast and you can watch some of the other things that we're doing. And so we just want to make that available to you. Let's pray together and ask the Lord to help us today. Pray for our nation. Pray for the health of our people. Father, thank you, Lord, for letting us uh, open the word of God this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to preach your word. Lord, I'm so undeserving, but I thank you, Lord, for the call. And Lord, I want to be faithful to the call. I want to preach your word. I want to uh, preach truth. I want to preach the Bible. And I pray you'll help me to do that today. Speak to every heart. And Lord, help people today, Lord, to receive it as they ought to receive it. I pray, Lord, for our nation, for our leaders, for our churches, uh, for our businesses, for people that's out of work right now, for people that's lost their businesses. God, please help them to recover from this. Uh, God, give them a good, a good recovery and help us as a nation to heal and to recover. And we just pray, Lord, that you'd be with us. Lord, we look to you. Uh, Lord, we should at all times, but we certainly look to you in times like these. And we need your help. And we petition you now, God, that you'd help us. Bless this broadcast today in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to read uh, about four verses from James chapter number one. Now these verses deal with the word of God. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. The word of God. The Bible says in verse number 22, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, how do we respond to God's word? That's the question this morning. How do we respond to it? I, I believe I believe every man ought to respond to it. I believe you ought to respond right, but not everybody will. But how do people respond to the word of God? Well, let me give you four things. And the last one really is the one that matters. Some, when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the word of God, some grieve over it. Uh, it grieves some people to learn what their responsibility is. Some people don't want to hear that they're a sinner. Some people don't want to hear that they have sinned against God and that they have a responsibility to their creator. I have a responsibility to my creator and uh, I know that he made me. He gave me life. He gave you life. We have a responsibility to him. And so it's important uh, today for us to understand that some grieve and we shouldn't grieve over the word of God. And then we see that some weave around it. In other words, they say that doesn't apply to me. Now I know that things that were written to the Jews in the Old Testament, I know some of that is not for us today. All of it is, is for us. I, I should say it's all for us, but it's not all to us. We can learn from all the scriptures. It's all important. But we are not responsible for the ceremonial laws. We're not responsible for those uh, things that they were responsible as a nation. Now, we understand that. We're not under the law. We're under grace. But what I'm saying is that when we understand what is for us, they say, that's not for me. When the Bible tells us how we are uh, responsible to God and how we are to call upon God and how we're to uh, come before him as a guilty sinner and repent, they don't want to hear that. They grieve, or they weave, I should say, weave around it. They move away. They try to squirm and get around it, get away from it. And that won't do you any good. You need to come clean with God and, and just come to the Word of God and say, all right, here's what it says. What do I need to do? And then do it. But we see some grieve over, some weave around it, but then we see some leave it. Some reject it. Some get out of church because they get offended. They don't want to hear what the Bible has to say. They leave it. They leave it. They walk away. Now, that's not the way we should. Those three things are in the negative. But here's what we ought to do when we hear the word of God. We should receive it. Receive it. 
That's how we receive salvation. We receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. That's how we uh, are saved. We receive him. But the word of God we should receive. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We should receive his word. Now, how should we do that? We ought to receive it, first of all, anxiously. Anxiously. The Bible says up in verse number 18, the Bible says of his own will, beget he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Now listen to verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, uh, slow to speak, slow to wrath. The Bible says we should be swift to hear. We ought to be anxious. We ought to be uh, desirous. We ought to be hungry for the word of God. I remember years ago, there was a little bird's nest that had built in uh, our little barn that we've got. And uh, these little little baby birds were in there. They thought I was their mother, I guess, bringing them some food. I had gotten close, made a noise. And all four or five of those little birds in that nest, they opened up their mouths. And boy, they were waiting for something. They wanted something that their mother was going to bring them that they could uh, have to eat. They were hungry for it. That's where we're to be with the word of God. We ought to be desirous. We ought to be anticipating something from God. And uh, we should receive it anxiously. We should receive it accurately. Receive it accurately. Don't try to make the Bible say what you want it to say. I've learned this over the years, and I know that I think we're all probably guilty at times. We make things out uh, maybe a little different. We don't study them out as well as we should. But I have learned over the years that when I study the Bible, now I'm not talking about the main doctrine of the Bible, but I'm saying that the truths of the Bible, when we study it out, we find out that there's a little, there's a little more there than we see from the surface. And I believe we ought to try to find the truth. I want to know what the Bible means. I want to know what the words mean. I believe one of the best ways to study the Bible is to study the words. If you learn what the words mean, you get you some good Bible dictionaries and you learn what the words mean, then you can learn what the verses mean. And then you can learn what the chapters mean and, uh, and other things go along with that. But we need to receive it accurately. Watched the documentary of the day on the King James Bible. And one of the things that was stressed when they were different sides working together, they had to come together and there was a, a desire to get it right, to get it right. I like that when I heard that because I use the King James Bible and I'm glad that I have a Bible this morning that I believe is right. And we were, we, when we hear it and when it's preached, we ought to receive it accurately. Then we ought to receive it joyfully. Oh, there's joy in the Bible. There's joy in hearing what God has to say. This is a love letter from heaven. It blesses my heart. I'm blessed more than any other thing. I'm blessed from what I read in the Bible. Oh, what a great book it is. Oh, what a wonderful book it is that God has given us. We should receive it joyfully. That means every once in a while there's going to be some rejoicing. There's going to be some excitement. There's going to be some happiness. Might even be a little shouting, amen. Not everybody's emotional, but uh, sometimes there'll be a, there'll be some excitement. There ought to be a joy in your heart, no matter what comes out your face or what comes out your mouth. There ought to be a joy in your heart. We ought to receive it that way. We ought to receive it daily. We ought to receive it literally. We ought to receive it reverently. It is God's word. It's a holy book. The Bible says it's the perfect law of liberty. We look into the perfect law of liberty. And then we ought to receive it obediently. We ought to do what it says. We ought to obey, obey its commissions, what it tells us to do, and we should obey its omissions, what it tells us not to do. Now, the word of God should be received, and I hope you'll receive it as it ought to be received. Thank you for listening. And until next time, God bless you, is our prayer.